Amy. John, this is such an interesting film. How was it originally described to you? Oh man, you know, I, I was quite lucky to watch Carlson kind of conceptualize it from the beginning, um, just because I've actually been friends with her for a very long time. Um, like the very first movie I did years ago, she was in, and then we worked on a TV show years later after that. Yeah. And, um, which was just, you know, it felt like a, like a, some sort of serendipity or something. And so we became really close. And I remember when uh, we were doing the first season of the show and she described to me, I remember one night we were doing a night shoot and she described to me this dream that she had kept having, this recurring dream. And uh, she was mentioning how like every night she was dreaming of her face and it was just horrified looking at something, oh. staring at something. And one night she had the reverse of this, little scene that was happening and it was just this black void and um she was like telling me about it that night and being like i'm gonna make a short film about this and um she and so yeah and she based it off of that uh short story by margaret cavendish and um so i kind of got to watch her create what this was going to be, make the short film and then get it into Sundance. And once that happened, she already had a feature script for this lined up and was ready to just attack it the second she was given the opportunity. So um, I've watched her kind of create what this was from this tiny dream. And so I was in it on the, from the ground floor. I was like, this is amazing and was so grateful that uh, there was a part that I could play that she she wanted me to play with her. I thought that was so cool. How did she tell you that Blake would fit into this big <laughs> labyrinth type dream that she had with the keys and everything? Yeah, I mean, I think he kind of came in, you know, he came in with the feature version of this script. And, um, you know, so much of this movie is kind of based on archetypes of people that we've all known growing up in Texas. And Blake is somebody that she described to me as kind of being, you know, like this person who obviously really cares for her, but is, um, you know, really troubled. He, he's not quite like living up to any potential that he might have had. He's, he's doing a ton of drugs. There's like the scene where he says he's out of, re he's not out of rehab. He like just got out of rehab and he's not sticking to it. And, you know, he's, he's not quite good news. And when Carlson and I would talk to talk about him, she kind of mentioned that he was like an archetype for somebody who stayed in the town that she's trying to kind of get away from and has gotten too comfortable and complacent with just like what that life is you know kind of the banality of this like wealthy kind of like not really doing anything mm -hmm. you know um so he kind of i think is is like a symbol of somebody that tries to keep margaret you know in place and she needs to kind of shed him in order to go deeper into herself were you allowed then any input in how you wanted to flesh out like to be or was everything just so beautifully written on the page for you by Carlson and um, the writer as well you know what it was like she was so open to talking deeply about him and Margaret and you know in doing so like talking about Carlson's past and my past and we were able to you know there was so much that we came up with together just speaking about you know what that relationship must have been like off the page that uh it allowed us when we just got to work we, you know it was um it, it, it did feel like it was already there you know but it, it definitely felt like a co-creative experience with Carlson and I'm sure every actor on this movie agrees with that because she was she was so willing to give the actors that she had hired the chance to be active. yeah it, it really felt like a co-creative experience and um i think because she's an actor herself she really understood the value of all the actors she had hired for the movie to come in with their voice you know that that was the person that she wanted it, she didn't try to force anybody into anything they weren't uh really naturally doing already which was really nice what's she like as a director then i know you've seen her as an actress and a co-star yeah, you know what? I and I was saying this in a previous interview. I it was so cool to watch her. It, it felt like she'd been doing this all her life. Like this was maybe 
like the most the purest expression of of her artistry you know so nice it just felt so natural to watch the way you know she knew exactly what she wanted she she planned so deeply for this too so when people had questions for her she had answers you know and um I yeah I and it was really cool the whole crew everybody you would talk to the crew every single person knew they were trying to make something special and they believed in Carlson so much and as a first-time director to have that I just thought that was really special and very well deserved oh my goodness that must have made her feel amazing (laughs) because you know to have your baby and it feel so natural just to and everyone fit together so easily um the scenes though were pretty intense I mean what were some of your most difficult ones to shoot Well, you know, I was only in a little bit of the film. So I had, I only had two big scenes and, you know, both of them felt like really scary at first to do because you really wanted to do well and right by your friend, you know, she's one of my best friends. So there's this added pressure of being like, oh my gosh, I hope, I really want to help your movie out. (laughs) But I, you know, I'd say the, I don't know. I, to be honest, what I really noticed was like, there were some scenes that Carlson had to do later that I was on set for that felt so difficult. And, you know, especially when she's in the final room, you know, the weeping room and she is just in the middle of this box and to watch Carlson have to be there emotionally with what's going on while also in between takes looking at the monitor of her own set. I mean, it just, I, to do that just it felt like it required so much focus and concentration and um yeah I, I don't think just anybody could do this I I was really impressed what do you think it is then about the blazing world that's going to make it such a fast fan favorite sci-fi fantasy thriller <laughs> man you know I I think this movie is going to resonate so deeply because it's it, in the end it's like a, a movie about healing you know that like it's about and Carlson would tell me this actually and I I hope I'm not blown up her spot but she would tell me this when she really decided she wanted to start making movies she wanted to make movies that were epic in scale but in the sense of epic in terms of the emotions that we feel as human beings since the dawn of time you know emotions that are divorced from where we are in the modern day but just more that we will have these pathways to healing these pathways through trauma we will have them until we are all wiped out as a civilization we will have to deal with this and i think the blazing world really tries to t- like tries to tell that story you know this timeless story of healing through trauma and 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 really healing through you know the way you find out that there are so many lies being told to you about how to truly heal And that in the end, the truest path is inward. And um, I just think, I think people are really going to resonate with that. What else have you been busy working on then lately? Oh man, you know, I, uh, I I did an episode of uh, 911 Lone Star last year, which was really lucky during the pandemic. And uh, I just did an indie movie again in Austin uh, a month ago. So, which was like so fun and, you know, all of, all of the independent Austin experience has been so beautiful because I think crews who work in Austin are some of the most passionate film crews in the country. And um, it always makes you just so grateful to be working in film. You know, you, you really touch the art form when you do stuff like that. Right. Um, so, yeah, so now it's just like, let's, we'll see what else is out there. What would you like to say then to everyone who are continued fans and supporters of the wonderful work that you do? Oh man, thank you very much. And I guess if you, if you guys, oh gosh, I, I mean, if, if there really are some fans like that, thank you. Reach out to me. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. 